Um, so Dr. Igor Ostrovsky is an MD, PhD. He practices functional integrative medicine. Um, he's in private practice, specialized in regenerative treatments, and he's the founder of the Vinci Health Center in New York City. So let's uh, bring on Dr. Ostrovsky. Thank you. So most of modern methods of treatment of degenerative conditions like osteoarthritis or tendinitis or of sports injuries are palliative and they address uh, mostly symptoms rather than the underlying issues. They focus mostly on suppressing the inflammation. And that's why we have uh, the whole class of drugs anti-inflammatories. We have uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, steroidal anti-inflammatories. And the problem with this approach is that it, it may suppress the healing process. And we'll talk about it in a couple of minutes. Uh, so we, uh, in our practice, uh, focus on regenerative treatments, and PRP is one of them. Other methods of regenerative treatments uh, are prolotherapy, neural prolotherapy. We also uh, provide nutritional modifications and hormonal modifications to improve the, to support the healing process. So we are in a private practice. We don't do uh, studies. So I will just briefly um, tell you about uh, uh, what we know in theoretical aspects of PRP. And uh, then I will go to the clinical uh, part, so you will see what, uh, what is really going on in the field. <coughs> and um, at the end, if we have time, I will show a couple of uh, office-made uh, teaching uh, videos. <coughs> so it's especially in the last probably five, uh, seven years, we have uh, professional athletes using PRP all the time. And this is just from the last uh, couple of months, right? And uh, the num num names of the articles are, is it uh, miracle or mirage? Uh, but uh, it works. So uh, platelet-rich plasma, as was already said, is an isolate from blood containing very high concentration of platelets. And uh, delivering of this uh, high concentration of platelets to the injury site uh, jump starts and accelerates the healing process. And uh, the question was uh, why platelets? And uh, uh, we all know that platelets are very good for blood clotting, but they're critical for healing process. And uh, like three years ago, I had a patient who uh, came to see me for PRP. And when I started explaining her about platelets, she said, don't bother. I said, why so? And she said, because I work in the blood bank. So platelets have uh, this, they act uh, actually as a storage for uh, large quantities of growth factors. And growth factors orchestrate the healing process, uh, which include the stem cell recruitment. So uh, healing uh, goes through stages. Um, injury causes disruption of blood vessels and formation of blood clot, major part of which is, as you know, the uh, platelets. Uh, then uh, there should be inflammatory phase, uh, tissue regeneration phase, and tissue remodeling. Patients that we see in a clinical practice with chronic pain, they come to us in inflammatory phase. And for some reason, they cannot actually complete this phase and go to regenerative phase. What PRP does, PRP uh, actually encourages the healing, uh, the inflammation uh, phase, and it enables patients to uh, complete it and to go to regenerative phase. So uh, if uh, there is such a uh, healing goes through the stages, then why in chronic cases patients get stuck in the inflammatory phase, uh, which they cannot actually resolve? Uh, why don't they get to regenerative phase? And uh, one of the reasons may be uh, anti-inflammatory medications that we use uh, so widely. Uh, including corticosteroids. And um, of course, there are other issues like uh, uh, dramatic drop in the uh, 
sexual hormones uh, that people experience exactly at the time when they develop degenerative uh, problems and also nutritional issues. Uh, but this anti-inflammatory is uh, probably quite a serious issue. And the reason I discuss that because uh, uh, they suppress inflammation, that's what they do, and PRP does exactly the opposite thing. It uh, stimulates the inflammatory process uh, temporarily. So, and here is the uh, three studies for tennis elbow treated with corticosteroids versus placebo injections. And um, uh, the best, uh, it best summarized in the last study by Coombs. Uh, the bottom line is you better have placebo injection than corticosteroid injections because at the end in 12 months, uh, patients who had steroid injections had 54% recurrence rate of inflammation and uh, those who had placebo injection had only 12%. Uh, yeah. So um, what are the benefits of platelet-rich plasma? It is autologous, so it's, there's no pathogenic transmission. It enhances angiogenesis. Uh, it provides stealth cell recruitment, and uh, there is antimicrobial effect at the uh, wound site where we inject it. Uh, so all this leads to accelerated healing. We address underlying biology of the injury. Uh, patients return back to normal activities more quickly. And the uh, important thing is that it doesn't raise the uh, blood sugar uh, as opposed to steroids. Um, also, uh, pain medication requirements is reduced and typically it requires only one treatment. And um, I had a patient uh, three months ago who was a 72-year-old woman, um, and we actually were shy in taking the uh, elderly patients for PRP treatments because we didn't know how they healed, actually, with PRP. But uh, in the last few years, we see that they heal the same way, so we started doing it for elderly population. So the 72-year-old woman with severe osteoarthritis, she cannot step on her foot, and she says, I found a job. So here we have 72-year-olds looking for jobs. And uh, she says, I don't want my boss to know that I uh, can't really step on my foot. So we did injection, and in two weeks, she didn't show up for the follow-up. So I called her and asked her, Stephanie, what's going on? And she says, well, I'm fine. I don't have any pain, <coughs> but I just can't come because I'm too busy at work. And, and this is quite uh, frequently that we see this kind of um, response. So as the uh, previous speakers discussed that uh, different manufacturers produce different equipment and there is no really, uh, we don't know what must be the uh, PRP product, right? Uh, we agree that there should be platelets, uh, there should be cytokines like platelet-derived growth factor, uh, uh, transforming growth factor, vascular endothelial growth factor, there should be chemokines uh, like SDF and uh, lipoxins like lipoxin A4. <coughs> and uh, by the way, it is uh, Actually, if you don't take your omega-3s yet, you should start doing that because they actually regulate the level of lipoxins and they have strong anti-inflammatory uh, properties. And there should be probably some WBCs in the uh, PRP, uh, especially uh, mononuclear cells because some of them uh, will be the stem cells. Uh, so how much of platelets, yes, it's always on the discussion, uh, but um, there was a very good article by a study by Justy in 2009, it was published, and uh, he reported that maximum angiogenesis is achieved at concentra concentration of platelets, 1.5 million platelets per microliter. And what is above that doesn't give any benefits uh, for angiogenesis. Uh, and what is below 600,000 uh, per microliter does not support proliferation or actually does the same job as platelet poor plasma. So uh, currently, uh, there is consensus uh, between, mostly there is a consensus uh, among doctors who use PRP that uh, there should be about one to one and a half million platelets per microliter. <clears throat> Here's, uh, that's where we stand now. Uh, 
And this is a list of proposed clinical applications uh, of PRP, uh, but um, uh, however, there is not enough of clinical studies to guide us uh, in the use of uh, PRP in different conditions, in particular conditions. Uh, and it's only in the last few years that we started seeing uh, studies coming up. And the problem is that no one has, uh, fortunately, no one has the uh, patent on the platelets, right? So, but there is a drawback that uh, there is not, uh, there is no one to support the uh, studies. Uh, so this study was uh, quite interesting. It's a recent one. Uh, treatment of lateral epicondylitis, uh, which is tennis elbow. Uh, it was done in uh, two Dutch teaching hospitals. Uh, they randomized 100 patients to the groups. One received the PRP injection, another received uh, steroid injections. And uh, the results was clearly uh, PRP is better. They did two-year follow-up. What is interesting, yeah, uh, they actually evaluated the uh, pain uh, symptoms and uh, uh, functional capacity. Uh, what is interesting that by the eighth week uh, after injection, both groups were in the same place in terms of uh, pain reduction. But after that, PRP, uh, PRP uh, was doing, patients were doing much better in terms of pain reduction, while uh, corticosteroid group, uh, actually they went back almost where they were. Uh, okay, another one. This is another study, uh, treatment of patella tendinosis, which is jumper's knee. Uh, they, it was a pilot study, they had 20 patients, and they reported that in two months they returned back to the previous level of activity. This is a, a study of treatment of Achilles tendinopathy. It was a study of 15 patients, and they also reported uh, very good uh, results uh, in terms of pain and function. Uh, this was a very interesting study, PRP for Achilles tendinopathy. Uh, they studied 32 patients. Um, they had a single injection uh, of uh, PRP, and uh, they reported that 25 of them, which is 78.8% of the patients, um, uh, they were asymptomatic in six months. And those who didn't see these patients, it's a very group, difficult group to treat, right? So having like 78% of them after one injection in six months, uh, fully back into uh, to their previous level of activity is great. And what is the most interesting thing that they did MRI <coughs> post-treatment, uh, and they reported resolution of uh, a thickening of Achilles tendon uh, in uh, all the patients, uh, in all 25 patients. Uh, this was a study of PRP for plantar fasciitis. Um, it's quite recent one, 2014, uh, which was also um, a very good, and uh, actually PRP group did better than a steroid group. And this was an interesting study, PRP for osteoarthritis. They compared the uh, a group with, uh, who received PRP injection to the group that had the hyaluronic acid injection. And uh, also there was a, uh, better, there were better results in the group with PRP. This was another study of PRP for osteoarthritis of the knee. It was a pilot study, 14 patients. They received uh, three injections of PRP to the knee with four weeks interval. Uh, and uh, in 12 months, the results were very good. The question is, do we really see articular cartilage repair? And um, uh, there are studies that suggest that PRP may play an important role in cartilage regeneration, but um, uh, we don't have studies to support that, like clinical studies, we, uh, because no one does uh, MRIs after the treatment uh, in the clinical practice. Uh, we use PRP in uh, osteoarthritis of knees, hips, wrists, small joints of feet, uh, and actually hands. A rotator cuff tear, low back pain, specifically facet syndrome, and we use it for cosmetic application also. 
So our clinical uh, indications for PRP treatment, patients should be uh, uh, symptomatic for three months at least and uh, be unresponsive to physical therapy. Uh, clinical findings should be corroborated by changes on MRI, ultrasound, and patients should be off NSAIDs for one week before PRP injection. Uh, we also instruct patients not to uh, take NSAIDs for three, four weeks after the treatment and uh, actually they don't need it after that. Uh, Post-injection protocol is standard rehab for strength and functional progression, and uh, again, we don't use NSAIDs. And, uh, yeah. and criteria for return to sports, we took it, uh, actually adapted it from Timothy Foster, and uh, actually those who are interested in the subject uh, I suggest that you go to his article because it was in 2009 before most of the studies, recent studies came out, but it was really a very good study. He summarized uh, a lot about use of PRP in the uh, orthopedic practice. Um, okay, so we used to do, uh, to perform uh, injections of PRP under fluoroscopic guidance, so uh, this is the um, injection to the knee joint. Uh, these are injections to facet joints. Uh, and uh, this is injection to glenohumeral joint. And um, I will show, if you have time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a short video, um, office made video. It was teaching uh, video. And we uh, actually uh, cut it to. Uh, fitted this this presentation, uh, you will have some idea of what it is. Oops. We'll perform injection of plated rich plasma for severe osteoarthritis of the knee. Uh, usually it takes two to three sessions, uh, four to six weeks apart, to achieve good, good results. And uh, my patients like this method. Uh, because it is natural, because uh, there are no side effects, and uh, because it uh, gives great results. First, I will draw blood. So now, after spinning in the centrifuge, uh, we separated the uh, plasma part, uh, which includes platelets. Platelets are here. A white uh, line of the cells is platelets and uh, the red blood cells. And now I will remove platelet four part of the plasma. Okay. And what is left is platelet rich part of the plasma. And this part of the plasma contains uh, five times more platelets than it is in the uh, blood itself. First, I numb the skin with lidocaine to make the procedure pain free. And then I inject plated rich plasma into the knee joint using ultrasound guidance. I inject when I actually see that needle is in the right space. So I will do plated rich plasma for the small joints of the foot, right? And uh, this is actually metatarsophalangeal joint. And this one, is, as you can see, is more deformed, right? All right, so first I inject the uh, lidocaine to numb the skin. Oh. And I inject plated rich plasma, and the ultrasound allows us to see the nice flow of PRP into the joint, where it starts the healing process. Okay. So for cosmetic use, uh, we um, apply PRP cosmetically to the age-affected areas of the face, neck, and hands, and it works uh, uh, the same principles. Uh, collagen declines as we age, and injecting PRP causes mild inflammation, the release of growth factor, attraction of stem cells, and as a result of this healing cascade, uh, uh, there is a remodeling of tissue to a healthy and younger look. Uh, procedure takes approximately 45 minutes to one hour. Uh, we advise two or three treatments. However, sometimes one injection is enough. 
And uh, post procedure, we also insist uh, on no NSAIDs, and we also provide some dietary modification to support healing. And uh, this is a short video uh, about cosmetic use of PRP. Uh, we actually, I cut out what is not related to PRP, right? But you will have some, uh, you know, references to it, so don't bother. To perform platelet-rich plasma injection for cosmetic purposes to improve uh, age-affected collagen-poor areas of the face, and uh, also we will use uh, biofillers uh, made from platelet-poor part of the plasma. This procedure is known also as vampire lid. I don't like this name, <laughs> but it is widely used. In this patient, will mainly restore loss of volume in cheeks and nasal labial. I draw blood from patient's vein and steam it in a centrifuge to separate plated rich and plated poor parts of the plasma. When this the spinning is finished, I pull out this unit and here we have separated uh, plasma and uh, uh, red blood cells and this uh, thin white layer of cells is uh, exactly platelets. They are very sticky and they stick to the walls of the chamber. Finally, I have 10 cc of plated rich plasma and 20 cc of plated poor plasma. Well, after we're done with biofillers, I will do the plated rich plasma injection. Actually, it goes into the same areas, and I will use it also in the areas that I didn't touch with biofillers. The vast few milliliters of plated rich plasma, and we'll inject. This is the video right after the procedure. And this is the video right before the procedure. Okay, so uh, with cosmetic applications, we are now in the same, actually, uh, area where we were like seven approximately years ago with the uh, orthopedic applications because there are no studies. Uh, there's few, actually, really few. I found a couple of them. And they basically are discussing if it is safe or it's not safe, if it's working, it's not working. Uh, but... Uh, we are in a clinical practice, and uh, uh, it works. Yeah. And um, actually, the interesting thing, how I get into the uh, cosmetic application, uh, it's because of my wife, because she said, you're doing it to the joints, and uh, I know that people use it for the face, so why won't you do it to me? And uh, <laughs> uh, Or do you want me to go somewhere else? So I said, no, I'd better do it myself. And um, uh, this is my wife, she's uh, 56, and I uh, do it like every half a year, uh, PRP, and uh, she looks great. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>